What's up guys, welcome to Data Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna address whether or not I think reselling is something you can do on a flexible schedule. I'm not entirely convinced that you can do reselling on a flexible schedule, but I'm gonna go over exactly why I think so in this video and go over three topics that I think are really relevant for any reseller. So please smash the like button, consider subscribing. We'll see you in the video. So I think a lot of people choose reselling as a way to earn extra money or a way to do something for a living because of the flexible schedule. And I think people are looking to fit in reselling with sort of two other things. So I think there's three parts to most people's day. One is the housework, which is like cooking, cleaning, organizing the house, household responsibilities. The second thing would be childcare. If you have kids, that's gonna be a major part of your day. And then the third part of your day is gonna be work, work, like earning money for a living or earning extra money. So there's sort of these three different topics, housework, childcare, and I call it work, 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 work. So I'm not entirely convinced reselling works very well if you don't do it on a more rigid schedule. Now I'm not saying it has to be a specific time every single day, but what I would like resellers to have is two things. One, consistent income. So like every single week, every single two weeks, a similar amount of money is coming in like a regular paycheck or a part-time job. Those have very predictable income. So I want people's income to be consistent, number one. Number two, ideally, if you're going to be doing this, I'd like you to earn at least $100 a day profit. This is pre-tax. So because there's so much work involved with getting a resale business up, photos, listing, storing, customer service, learning how platforms work, learning how marketing works online on platforms like eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Amazon, all of them require different learning curves. And if you're gonna go through all that work, in my opinion, you should make at least $100 a day for all that additional work. And you can't really make $100 a day working here or there. I think it has to be sort of rigid. Like maybe the three to four hours a day you put into it can be flexible, like maybe you do it between eight to noon or between nine and one if something comes up, but it's not in a sense like some days I do it and some days I don't because that wouldn't create consistent income. Um, a lot of people ask about why you should list every day on eBay. I think you should list every day because eBay gives you a certain amount of traffic for every single listing. So if you put in different amounts of listings every day, you'll have different amounts of traffic. And just like a brick and mortar, on days that you're closed, you're gonna have less people than if you're open seven days a week. So I think it's important to think about reselling as like this 24 hour machine. And if you stop putting stuff into it, it doesn't really work that well. So I've been doing this full time for almost six years now. And I've been watching people on my YouTube channel and in my mentorship group at patreon.com slash the podcast. And people who do it sporadically, they have like, sometimes 5% of the results that people do it full time. So, or part time, let's say somebody does two hours a day, all 30 days, that's 60 days, uh, 60 hours of work, two hours a day times every single day is 60 hours of work over the course of a month. Now in our group, we do like 10 listings per hour on average. So that's 600 listings for somebody doing it two hours a day, all seven days. But if you just occasionally work a full, a full day, let's say that once or twice a week you work five hours ends up being less money than if you just do a little bit consistently over time so i'm not convinced that you can be a successful reseller if you're doing it on a flexible schedule because housework child care and your job typically are not flexible i'm i'm a new father i have a toddler her schedule is pretty rigid. We take her to childcare at the same time. She goes to bed around the same time every day. We feed her about the same time every day. If I told her nap time is always different, we're gonna feed you always different. Childcare is a different time every single day. I'm not, I'm not convinced that would work. It seems like that would be very difficult to manage. On the household side, right? So I call it reset to zero. That's like cleaning the counters, laundry, um, putting the dishes in the dishwasher sweeping the floor, mopping the floor, uh, gardening, all that stuff that you may or may not have to do at home. It's easier on a schedule. You don't tell a gardener, come whenever you feel like it. You would say, come every Thursday to do that. You would tell someone who comes and cleans your house every two weeks, come on a Sunday during this time. You wouldn't say, come whenever you feel like it. So I think the work whenever you feel like it doesn't work with when you're reselling. And I hear a lot of people saying, I love to resell because of the flexible schedule. 
I don't know if that's true. I look at everyone doing this and the people who are successful don't have a flexible schedule. They wake up, they get their listings done before their family wakes up. Then the whirlwind of being a human being takes over. Being, being the breadwinner or being head of household takes over. And there's a lot of people who do a lot of planning. Who does this role? Who does that role? How do they split the responsibilities in the house? And I think that that is why some families succeed and some families don't. That just winging it, I'll get as many listings done as I can. That doesn't seem to work as well as, hey honey, I have 10 listings to do and I'm gonna knock it out over the next hour, hour and a half, and then I'll come back and rejoin the family. That seems to work really well. People who have a full-time job come home, maybe do their side hustle and then spend time with their significant other. Or if you have kids, maybe you do your full-time job, come home, hang out with your kids, put them to bed, hang out with your spouse after your spouse goes to sleep, work on your side hustle. That seems to work, right? Or if you're doing nap time hustle, I feel like the nap time hustle isn't the listing photography shipping part because that part is really important and that part seems to be the part that you would do with childcare or once a week or on the weekend or there has something's got to give you need to give yourself time to actually get that done and trying to squeeze it in between childcare and housework for me it has not worked it's very difficult i think you could do some administrative stuff like maybe researching what shipping supplies to get or learning about how the platform works you could do that in between different tasks but Unless it's sort of rigid, I think it doesn't work. That's just, just my personal opinion. So let me know in the comment section below what you think. But I think a rigid zero to two hour a day schedule is the easiest way to do reselling because you're giving yourself a consistent chance to put up new listings, sell a consistent number of listings and create that consistent meaningful income. I think an extra hundred bucks a day changes a lot of people's lives. But if you sporadically make five here, 25 here, 50 there, even 500 one day and none the rest of the month, that's not really consistent enough to build anything solid. And this channel is about daily refinement, which is about slowly improving your day so that it's closer to where you want to be. And I think that you need margin. So most people don't need an extra $3,000 a month from $100 a day income, but that would really help. It would help you get ahead. If one person has a full-time income and the other person is making $3,000 a month extra, I think it really, really goes a long way. So I appreciate you guys. Please smash the like button, consider subscribing. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the resource podcast, and we'll see you next time. Take care.